Welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60, and on today's episode, I'm fitting some of the most common wear and tear and maintenance items that really give the M54s a bad name. Now these items I'd actually ordered before I realized I was gonna have any compression problems with this E90 engine, just because they are that common to play up and that much of a pain in the ass to change once they're in the vehicle, it's just a no-brainer to do it while they're out, even though I'm trying to not spend any money on this motor. So what we have are really the N54s arch nemesis is here. So first off, starting on the right, we have the oil pan gasket. Now this motor won't actually come out of the E90, it was covered in oil, but I don't think, bizarrely, for 121,000 Ks, I don't think the oil pan was actually leaking. The oil pan gaskets on these, they're a metal reinforced rubber gasket, and it's actually quite a good gasket, but over time, the rubber or plastic or whatever it is, it does actually go quite brittle, dries up, and then it will start to weep. I actually had to replace my oil pan gasket not long after I got that car. It was around 150,000 kilometers when I did it, so super common problem. You do hear about it a lot, people sort of dreading having to do it, and it is an absolute nightmare because you have to take the subframe off to get the oil pan off when the engine's in the car, so it is quite a big job and another reason I'm gonna do it now. Now these gaskets, I honestly can't remember what I paid for it, but I think they're around 30 US dollars for the Erlink brand, which is cheap as chips. And then I ordered new Batmic um, aluminium bolts for the pan as well. They're supposed to be a one use only. Uh, I don't really, to be fair, when I did that one, I did use new bolts as well, but you don't need to talk them up that tight, so. But anyway, I've ordered new bolts. Again, I think they're around $20, so pretty cheap to do that job properly, and it's gonna be super easy while it's on the stand. And second in line, we have the valve cover or rocker cover as we call them down here in Australia. Now these, these leak all the time and it's because, I'll try and carefully turn it over. They have this very complex routing of the gasket. Now it is a rubber gasket and it is quite thin, but basically the gasket runs all the way around and then all the way back down. And it's very common to leak on this inner edge here. Now gaskets again, they're pretty cheap. I think you can get them for 30 or $40 for a gasket. However, and actually to be fair, I did replace the gasket on that car not long after I got it. And a month later I realized I still had an oil leak. I didn't realize at the time, but the rocker covers, which are plastic, are also very prone to cracking. And the more time I've been reading about M54s and hearing about other people's problems, the cracking of the, the valve cover is a very, very common problem. And because of the way they route, or the BMW have routed the PCV system, and this whole block here is all for the PCV, um, depending on where it cracks, it can actually cause some very bizarre issues with an M54. Like I know about people that have misfires with a crack valve cover, bad smoking issues where people have thought their turbos are blown, but it's just a crack valve cover. My valve cover was cracked. It was actually just cracked down on this little edge here. Uh, the only issue I had with it, it was still leaking oil into where the spark plugs go. Um, kind of annoying, but the one that I replaced it with, and I think it must have been February this year that I replaced it with this brand of aftermarket Chinese rocker cover and it had been absolutely fine. That's why I went for another one. They, you can get them on sale for sort of 150 to 200 Australian delivered. That's a complete rocker cover with the bolts and the new gasket. No brainer, while it's off, it's getting a new one. Okay, third in line, we have the drive belt tensioner. Now these, I know they don't look like much, but there's a big issue with these lovely engines sucking the drive belts down in through the, the crank seal. Now that's an issue because a lot of people don't realize when that happens, it might suck one or two of the bands into the sump and then it will block your sump and then detonate your engine. But they'll, they'll basically they'll lose the drive belt, replace the drive belt, not realize it's been sucked in, which is really bad, but it does seem to happen more often than you'd ever imagine. So making sure you've got a proper drive belt tensioner and a new drive belt, which I've got stored over there, uh, is a bit of a no-brainer. Again, these are around $50 and you can get a new drive belt for around 30 and I've got a genuine continental one. Um, I thought I'd replace it while I got it off there. Now that tensioner feels actually fine with its tensioning side, but it is getting a few grooves in the pulley and I don't want anything, I mean, for the sake of what they cost, it's just a no-brainer to swap it and just know that the belt's gonna be on there perfectly. Now I do actually think a big issue where people lose the belts Bizarrely, I believe it's caused by sagging engine mounts. When the engine mounts sag on these motors, the power steering pulley will actually contact the subframe. And if you do hit the plastic power steering pulley, it will obviously eject the belt straight off. And even if people don't realize that the power steering pulley is damaged. So it's a bit of a weird one, but while we're, while we're in there, I'm definitely gonna put a new one on. Again, 50, 60 bucks for a new one of those and a belt makes sense to me. And lastly, and these were actually 
I believe the big issue with this engine is the oil filter housing and the oil cooler housing, which is this part here, little gaskets. Now these little suckers, they're little rubber gaskets. They sit into, they almost work more like an O-ring. So they sit into this little groove that runs all the way around. And when they're new, they will protrude about one or two mil. They press up against this flat surface just here and it basically seals oil and coolant galleries. And the reason they get a bit nasty is because they have coolant and oil going through them, when they start to weep, uh, it will actually mix the oil and the coolant. So people do have a bit of a heart attack when they end up with oil in their coolant reservoir. And of course, they make an absolute mess because they will cover the whole thing in oil. In fact, I believe this actually leads on. This engine, I don't think I've got any pictures of it, but this whole front section was drenched with oil. And obviously oil will make its way onto the drive belt and deteriorate the belt. So that is another reason that you can actually end up damaging the belts and getting it sucked into the engine. And I will show you the new belt here. Brand new Conti belt, all nice and dry, not oil soaked. Well, I think it's just a matter of getting on with it. So it is kind of a bit like cheating right now because the engine's not in the car and everything's off. But when you do do these, um, when you do the rocket cover in the car, uh, I have noticed a few people think you do need to remove the injectors. You don't. You do need to remove the coil packs, but you definitely don't need to remove the injectors. Um, one thing I am going to do today, I have cleaned that surface already. It was nice and clean when I was doing all the valve lapping, but I will just give it another quick wipe over with brake clean, make sure the valve surface is good, and we should be good to go. Perfect. So the rocket cover, this aftermarket one, which I'll put a link below, does come with all new bolts in their position. It does have a torque sequence, but we're just gonna roll with it. So it's very important that you do make sure the gasket is perfectly seated all the way around before you plonk it on the head. Now, again, it's almost like cheating being able to do this on an engine stand here, but this is quite difficult when you've got to get down in the engine bay into the right spot. Okay, so we have the gasket properly seated. I wanna be really careful not to touch the gasket and unseat it, but we'll just slide this on and get it about where it needs to be. You sort of get a feel for when all the bolts have slid in their holes. Cool. Now they do have a torque sequence, but it is essentially starting in the middle and working your way out. Um, and I can't remember the exact torque specs. I don't have a torque wrench, so I didn't really follow them. I've never used a torque wrench on a rocket cover. You can actually feel when these bolts get tight enough, they'll actually stomp down, not stomp down, but they crush down onto the metal sleeve inside. And that's when you stop talking. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna get on with doing it up. So all I'm gonna do is just do every single bolt, sort of one or two turns, just make sure it starts perfectly. Well, not perfectly, but just make sure it starts with nothing on the threads. No strange feelings. In fact, because we're not talking this, you could probably just go all the way around. You don't need to do it in the tightening sequence. But I have found that you do wanna make sure they'll at least turn, make, do a couple of turns, because that means the gasket, well, that means the rocket cover is aligned properly on the head. If it's out of alignment, they'll, um, they won't wanna tighten up nicely. Or they won't wanna thread nicely, I should say. So the rocket cover also has three, I call them earth poles, but they are super long bolts. Actually, I'll show you them properly. Yes, yeah, so they actually work as earth points for the coil packs. And obviously they have a 10 mil head on them right down the bottom, which is hard to get with a normal socket. The socket that I've always used to do it, this is actually a spark plug socket from a lawn mower. And it just sits down onto the 10 mil heads perfectly. Again, we'll just get them started, make sure they're gonna thread all right. And that's it, that is every bolt started and we can actually get to the point where we'll start talking them down now.
So that is now, all of them are just finger tight and you can still see there's a reasonable gap all the way around. And it's just as you go past this point, this is when the torquing sequence is gonna come in. Now, like I said, I don't have a torque wrench, so I've never done them by the proper torquing sequence, but I basically just do them all so they're finger tight, just putting pressure on the plastic cover, ready to squeeze it down a little bit. And then I'll basically do two or three turns, two or three quarter turns, work my way around, and then I'll do a final torquing sequence. So I'll get on with that. Okay, so they are all torqued down. I think I mentioned it at the start, but as you torque them down, you, they get to a point where they don't want to turn anymore, and that's just how far I tighten them up. The very, I've done, this will be my fourth or fifth rocker cover, on the valve cover on an M54. The very first one I did, I actually followed all the torque sequences and did it as by the book, as much as by the book as I could, and actually leaked out of here. Um, so from now on, I basically just clamp them down until they don't want to tighten anymore, and I haven't had any others leak. Uh, one thing I will say, I do know of people that have snapped the original bolts, so if you are reusing your bolts, maybe don't crank them down quite too much. But yeah, when I do them that way, I don't seem to have any issues. So rocket cover's on. Man, it's looking like an engine. Uh, I think next in line, you yeah, might do the idler pulley. All right. So from memory, there's just one bolt that holds the drive belt tensioner. It's not just an idler pulley. Holds it in place. And it's that one there. It looks like a T30 or a T40. So we'll get that undone. So I've just popped the bolt out of the original one and taken it apart. And yeah, you ended up with the same setup that you get with the aftermarket one. Just that piece, slots in there, pulley goes on, bolt goes through, ready to be done up. So this is the area where the tensioner locates and you can only get it in one way round. So it's all pretty easy to bolt back on. And it is, it's got the pin in there, which just keeps it lined up so that you can fit it. Although I don't think it makes much of a difference. That's it, idler done, or tensioner. So next we're gonna attack the oil filter housing gaskets and oil cooler gasket. I'm just trying to get them out now. Hopefully these aren't too hard, but I remember trying to get my ones out on the E92 when I first got the car. It was a nightmare because they were all hard and brittle. She's starting to come. Yeah, they're pretty, feels more like plastic than rubber at the moment. So I got that out, I'll give that a clean out and we'll also get the oil cooler housing one out as well. That's that one out there. All right, I'll just give these a quick clean. Okay, so we have the new gasket there, cleaned out all the grooves, and obviously the head is all really clean from the other day. So that's the oil filter housing one, and hopefully you can see there how much it protrudes when it's new. You've got that one or two mil sticking out, and yeah, when they get a bit of age on, they just sit perfectly flat. So let's get this part bolted on to the head. All right, so I just got these bolts out before to make sure I had the right ones. And hopefully you can see there, but this surface is all perfectly cleaned that it's gonna make two. And it is kind of, as I keep saying, I feel like I'm cheating doing it this way. So we've got the big one that goes on first. Now, this one's quite easy to get to when it's in the car. The one that goes over the back, this one, this one that goes over the back here, you actually do need to take the intake manifold off to get to it. So we're sort of cheating. Got that one there. And then this one at the front, a lot of people do struggle with this. When I did it on the car, I actually did it with a really short ring spanner. 
and that actually gave me enough access to get it off. But since we're on the stand, we've got heaps of access to get to it with the e-torx bits. So that's the main oil filter, oil filter housing bolted on. And we'll just do the gasket for the oil cooler housing. So that should slide in there like so. And then we've got heaps of it heaps of protrusion so it's actually sticking out we have a nice clean surface and we'll plonk her on so I've left the biggest job for last it's the sump gasket and We'll try and rotate the engine round so it's a little bit easier to get to. Hopefully the engine stand doesn't fall over. Okay. Seems to be seems to be safe. So I'm gonna give it a quick clean down on the surface as I like to do, and then we'll get to attaching the sump. So she's all cleaned off. You can see a little bit of oil running down from behind the um, plate just there. Now, something I just wanted to note quickly, when you do this in the car, there are two power steering bolts which hold the sump on, which caught me out. I think well, it might be one bolt. And you also have bolts that come in through the bell housing into the sump as well. Um, I didn't actually keep record of where each of the bolts are, so even though we've got all the different lengths ones, we'll just have to work it out as we go, but it is all pretty easy and straightforward once you get on it. So she's cleaned off. It's just a matter of putting the new gasket on the sump and getting it on. So I've got the gasket laid on the sump. Everything's cleaned again. And this is probably gonna be a bit difficult one-handed, but let's see how we go. I'm gonna put a bolt through. Probably one of the jobs that might be easier if it was the it was the right way up instead of trying to do it on the side. But let's just make sure everything is lined up, and it appears to be. I'll just get another bolt in the top. Okay, so. I've got four bolts in there. Every hole is all lined up, I can see. So it's just a matter of getting all the bolts in, I guess. So that's all of those holes filled. Now I did use that gun, but I wasn't actually tightening with that. It was just to save all the threading. And I've got those four left over. And I think I might have had four left over when I did the one that's actually in the car at the moment. Unless they do go through there. I cannot remember, but I will find out shortly. Uh, so now it's just a matter of actually talking them, which I'll do that by hand, just so I get a good feel on what's going on. That's it. We have the new rocker cover, new oil pan gasket, new oil filter housing gasket, new oil cooler housing gasket, and new tensioner all fitted up. So they are really the, the big things that cause a lot of people pain with the M54s. I suppose I'll just show you guys as well. We have nice clean 
intake ports and valves. Everything's looking good. It's got to be the cleanest N54 I've ever owned, even if it is quite badly stained. Alrighty. Well, that'll end off for this video. Um, basically, that was all the bits that I wanted to get back on this before I pulled the engine out of the E92. I may fit the, I'll leave it off for now because I'm going to change. I should say you guys now, I'm going to run the fuel pump off of the E92. I'm going to run the index 12 injectors off the E92. I've got spark plugs to go in, the elder coils. I don't know where the oil cap's gone from the E90. Hopefully it's around somewhere. Um, but aside from that, obviously the AC unit's got to go on from the other car as well. But yeah, that's most of all the things I wanted to get back on this engine all done, I think. Yeah, so once that's out, it'll be a matter of swapping the turbos from that engine onto this engine, the port injection, yeah, and all the bits that make that one the fast motor, I guess. Hopefully it won't be too bad. And it should be quite easy having this one on the stand and I'll need to do some working out on what we're gonna do with that one. Actually, if you guys have got any tips, um, Jake did tell me to make sure I remove the torque converter bolts from the torque converter whilst the gearbox is up in the air because it'd be very hard to separate the gearbox once I drop it down on the floor. Because that's the plan, I'm gonna drop the engine, subframe, gearbox, front suspension, everything's gonna get dropped on the ground. Then we'll pull the engine off of that and drop this engine in place. That's the plan, we'll see how we go. But yeah, if anyone's got any tips on other things I should do to that whilst it's up in the air before I drop everything down, that'd be great. All right, that'll do for now. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've got any questions about the common maintenance items on the M54s, please let me know in the comments below. I will put links to all of these items. All of these parts that I've used here are what went into this car over the last year, and I've not had any problems with those at all. Yeah, that engine doesn't leak oil anymore. It's pretty crazy. All right, guys, thanks again. Catch you on the next one. Peace.